All right, kids, Louisiana Beer Reviews. We are looking at a Trader Joe's brand, or at least it has their name on it. Yeah, well, it is. Providential. Providential. Providential Belgian style golden ale. Uh, it says it's an ale brewed with spices on lees. I don't, I'm not sure what on lees means. On, on live yeast. It says on lees. Yeah, that means live yeast. Like okay. it's bottle condition. It's fermenting while it's in the bottle. I haven't been schooled. So it comes at 7.5% alcohol. It comes in this fancy dancy bottle like you'd get uh, with one of the Founders beers or something from the North Coast. Comes or, with a or from Belgium like Chimay. Right. Or like Chimay. And uh, I don't know much about this. Do you know much about it? A little bit. And I said off air I was becoming disoriented. I don't know why we're going here. What's going so on? I was trying to. <laughs> All right, uh, we're doing a beer review. I don't know where disorientation comes from. Uh, Best Buy, November 14, 2019. Wow. <laughs> so as we speak in today, this beer has a date on it. It says you can drink this thing for another 15 months. Yeah. Wow. 7.5% alcohol. I'm thinking Bud Light would never come on in that. Yeah, I mean, it's not designed for that. Okay. It's imported from Canada. Hmm. Canada. Yeah, you know. What kind of breweries we got in Canada, Mike? Well, it tells you right here. Brewed by Unibrew of Chambly, Quebec. The province of Quebec, the French province in Canada. Imported by Unibrew USA. So it's Unibrew. They make... You've seen Unibrew beers probably, huh? Mm -hmm. you never seen Unibrew? Yeah. Like at... Um, like at Whole Foods, they make a bunch of different Unibrew beers. They're always like live. They're like living ales. They, yeah. Bottle condition. You never had a Unibrew? Yeah. They're owned by Sapporo. See, it says right there, Unibrew. Okay. It's an old company. They got bought out by Sapporo. Okay. All right. They got bought out by the Japanese. So we're going to go ahead and try this. Yeah, it's an old, one of the old school craft beer companies started in Canada years ago. They have like Trois Rivier. And, um, is it really craft beer or is it the way beer is supposed to be made? Well, it's craft beer, whatever that term means to you. They had a good price on this at Trader Joe's. Yeah. Do you remember what it was? I didn't buy it. You did. It was like $5.99. Wow. $5.99. But if you get a Unibrew, it would be like $9.99. Even though it might be the same beer, you know, it's just, whoa, nice pop. Like champagne. Oh, wow. It's good. No stinky cork. Watch it, because this thing is going to be so charged. It is alive. It is just going to blow up. Full glass of foam. Yeah, I mean, these things are just, like, incredible. Okay, so we're going to sit here and probably talk about this for a bit as we allow the carbonation to go down in the beer. Yeah. Oh, that would be a great photo. I, don't know. I always forget to take photos. All right. Um, <clears throat> I have had this, but it's been many years, the Trader Joe's brand. You know, mm -hmm. What do you think about Trader Joe's beers since we're talking? You went over there. We went there last week the got to church. I, I think for the most part, and I haven't had them too often. Um, they're pretty good. Uh, some of them, uh, some of them are uh, kind of fall along the lines of like an extract beer, like like there's one beer, but then they make different flavors for the one beer. Like they're using a base in there. Right. Um, and then uh, other ones are, are good. You can kind of point out those. Uh, Firestone Walker makes some beers for them. And Gordon did, Beers, Gordon Beers. I did notice those those were pretty good. And Gordon Beers was, were pretty good. And Minhas, they made that strange chocolate beer that you thought tastes like chocolate powder. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I wasn't a big fan of that one. Uh, there was one that, uh, that mimicked a, a Mexican style, which I thought was pretty darn good. And there was one called uh, yeah. Black Toad, I think. Black Toad, yeah. It's 
I like that. I enjoyed that one. And there was another one that was coming along those lines. There was a red ale that was pretty good. Um, and they're like 85 cents to a dollar a bottle or can, so you yeah. can't beat that. I, I think some of them were pushed along the lines for buck 17. I mean, you can't beat that. Right. That's what the uh, yeah. That's what so, that uh, Oktoberfest beer was, a dollar 19. Yeah. Anyway. So you get you get a quality beer made by somebody else. Uh, I, I don't know if, if if they're taking their beers and pouring them into bottles with a different label, or if they're just uh, um, making a different beer. Because some yeah. of those beer brands, I, I we can't get here, so we just. Oh well, like, do you ever see Gordon Beersh anywhere? No. Do you ever see? We well, have to go down to Gordon Beersh down in the French Quarter. Oh, on Canal Street. Yeah, which is right outside of the French Quarter. Do you ever see? But. In stores, no. no. Do you ever see Firestone Walker? No. 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 Do you ever see Menhaus? No. No. Thank you. Wow, this smells like Duvel. <laughs> but different it does. It smells good. It's lemony. It's got that... It's got that uh, yeast that you can smell. <clears throat> It's a lot of yeast. It's got a little bubble gum in the in the aroma. It's got a little banana, or maybe like that bananas foster with that hollandaise sauce. You know, it's rich. Yeah, I'm just trying to get to a point. This is going to take us a minute. For oh this, no, for this to go down. It's like a. It's like a. I'm loose. not really looking to get foam all over my beard and look more like Santa Claus, and some people say I look. So. Check this out. Like Jay, get shit all over your mustache and nose. Oh, that is sweet bananas, bubble gum, grain husk. Um, grain husk? Yeah, you get that with these vintage ales. Vintage ales? You know, these kind of European style uh, ales, they'll have like that grain husk, which is not, to me, a great characteristic. There's, there's, there's a little story on this, and since I'm waiting for my uh, my head to dissipate, and get to a point to where I want to put it all over my beard and mustache. I'm going to go ahead and read the back of this bottle. It says, This delicious beer is made in Quebec, Canada, and brewed according to the time-honored traditions of the classic Belgian ales. It strikes the perfect balance between spice, hop, and malt profiles. With champagne-like effervescence and aromatic notes of citrus peel, and ginger. Mm -hmm. This beer is malty, mildly sweet, and happy with a subtle spicy finish. It is sure to please the most finicky beer drinkers. I don't know about that, but it will please finicky beer drinkers. Most reasonable beer Kids, drinkers. Kids, do we know any finicky beer drinkers? I know some, but I would say so it I'll would throw please. That question out there. It okay. would please reasonable beer drinkers. I don't know about finicky. It tastes like spiced white bread. Again, I'm just reading what was on the back of the bottle. Right, right. Coriander. Well, yeah, well, like the back black velvet whiskey I drank. It did. It wasn't as good as they claimed on the company website, but it was still good. But you know, they make it sound like it's the greatest thing ever. This is good. It's got that banana. It's got that little ginger, citrus. I can't place where it is because it kind of falls off. Slightly pithy, citrusy, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it kind of goes into that yeast, which I don't really like. But I'm not a fan of the yeast. But I think once the yeast is done and it's at the bottom of the bottle, you're not one of those swishing poor people. Not with yeast. You've, you've seen my videos where I do all that and it makes a cloud. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. We have issues. No, I, I enjoy that. Oh, well. I like this, but it's kind of like Duvel in the sense that I like it, but I wouldn't make a habit of drinking it all the time. It's too rich and, uh, you know, means to, yeah, like you couldn't handle it every day. Yeah, I, I, something tells me we should have we should have tried this in a wider glass. Like the Tula. Uh, yeah, like the Tula. Like a Duvel glass, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, that's true, but um, it's fine. The mouthfeel is, is, is heavy. Oh, yeah. Not in a bad way, it's just it sticks to your tongue like <coughs> Excuse me. 
Again, I was interrupted. Uh, it sticks to your tongue like peanut butter. Uh, so, and it, the bubbles in the head. Jeez, these things are huge and don't go away. It's almost like a meringue. Not really the type of thing you'll see people drinking at an LSU football game uh, uh, tailgate party. I, I think I'll see anyone drinking anytime soon, anywhere. Oh, well, you know, you might go to somebody's house and they'd be drinking it. But it's just not... It would make me sick. If I drank too much of this, it would literally make me sick. Hell yeah. yeah. I mean, you would just... Bleh, you know, it's just too rich and sugary and alcoholic. Maybe uh, Joe would drink this. Joe Dufresne? I didn't throw the last name out there, kids. Joe, if you see this and... He went ahead and exposed you like that. You might want to go ahead and instant message him somewhere. Set up a fight on the levee. He's like, he's on Facebook. I mean, he's posting photos all day long of rock albums and beer. I mean, it's not like he's hiding out. He's not in the witness protection program. Um, Again, I didn't throw your name out there, Joe. I yeah, he said, might. I just yeah, said, right. He would drink this at a Tulane pregame yeah. party. I'll tell you what. Yeah, okay. I, Joe, I Joe is a fine connoisseur of the appreciation of the really good beers. Yeah, and Vito. And I kind of, I kind of like his style because he doesn't go too, too far off into to the fruity, the, the fruity sour mixed stuff, which I don't really like either. But he like, he like really sticks to the home, you know, to to the good stuff, you know, like. True stouts, true IPAs, yeah, true right. Belgians, you know, the good stuff. Yeah, I can appreciate that, yeah. I don't I don't want but maybe one more ounce because I can't handle it. Vito seems to experiment, but yeah. then I, then I kinda see him going back to, to the home coming back home. You know? Except so. Vito would would pour some old charter in a shot glass and drop it in here. <laughs> Right? He likes his flaming Dr. Pepper spray. I don't know what to call those. Those are right, really yeah. big. Those are really big in the 90s. It's I watch those and I'm like, I can't believe you could drink that. You know, it's like yeah. I would be at the hospital. I have noticed that he has kind of stepped away from those lately. Yeah, I would be at the hospital. He, he, must, you know? he, must, he must be uh, traveling or something. Yeah. Anyway, how would you rate this? I would say A plus. You know? Oh yeah, it's just just A plus in its style. It's just fantastic. It's delicious beer. Uh, I I would recommend trying it. But again, it's one of those like you said. It's, you don't want to drink all the time. Once a year type thing. Uh, no, you twice a year. Uh, well, I mean, once a month. Well, yeah, but we drank these kind of fancy fancy things all the time anyway. You know what I mean? Like so, this this is an Oktoberfest beer. Right. Belgium and Germany are right next to one another. Uh, this I is know, an October I understand festival. that. The breweries mixed because of the World War. Okay? So let's 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 put it all aside. All those guys were interrelated and they, all the breweries were interrelated. Okay. I know so, Quebec was French and France is next to Germany, etc. So right. there's a lot of interaction. I understand right. all that. And the famous French beer that everybody likes but they don't want to admit to it is Chimay. No, it's Belgian. That's what I said. Belgian. <laughs> you I was about to say Cronenburg. All right. Um, but it, it's it's all the same region. It's it's like Texas, Mississippi, Louisiana. I mean, come on. The tri-state, the yeah, tri-country area. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean. But, but wait. We're talking about the northeastern part of France, Alsace-Lorraine, Luxembourg, Belgium, and Germany. That little congruent area along the... Uh, Borderlands, where they do a lot of uh, interaction. All right, right, so yeah, A plus, and a lot, uh, a lot of people with French dis dis descendation in the southeast Louisiana, Louisiana are from Alsace Lorraine. Alsace Lorraine, yeah. Alsace Lorraine, the uh, the German slash French uh, area. Okay, that's where my people. And that goes back to the Treaty of Verdun, eighteen forty. I mean, eighteen, eight, the year eight forty three. Okay, but anyway, uh, fantastic product, uh, yada, 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 etc., uh, etc., etc. Et I'm going to end this review by saying, y'all come on down to southeastern Louisiana. This is a beer, if you're talking about dis being disoriented, uh, thank you.